morning, everyone. We invite you to prepare your hearts for worship this morning as we start our first song. Good morning. Whether you're worshiping with us in person today or online, we want to welcome you. We're glad you're here today. A special welcome to our guest pastor, Peter Alexander. This morning, Pastor Alexander has 14 years of parish ministry. Currently, he is the Dean of Teaching Faculty of the Lutheran Transitional Ministry Association. He has taught in, in, internet, in Sorry, excuse me. He has taught intentional interim ministry to over 350 ELCA and LCMS pastors and has assisted in the placement of hundreds of interim pastors across the nation. 
His wife, Diana, has a ministry of her own as a congregational financial operations consultant and tax professional. We welcome them back again this morning to Redeemer. In your announcements packet, you will find a green connection card. This card will help you get information you are looking for and also help us to get to know you. This card and your offering can be turned in in the lobby in a wooden collection box located by the red doors next, next to Tom back there. <laughs> uh, you can also use the QR code in the pew to connect with us electronically for offerings, announcements, and also that connection card. If you are new with us, we do have staff nursery available downstairs. You are welcome to take your children at any time the ushers will help you find it. The service of installation for Pastor Dennis Hilkin, our next pastor at Redeemer by the Sea, will be here in the sanctuary next Sunday, May 22nd at four o'clock in the afternoon, followed by a reception in the fellowship hall downstairs. Please mark your connection card and come celebrate this special moment for the ministry of Pastor Hilkin and Redeemer. We look forward to seeing you there. We're partnering with a number of North County churches to do a Feed My Starving Children meal packing event on May 20th and 21st. Together, we are trying to raise $25,000 to cover the cost of 100,000 meals. Our Redeemer evangelism team will match up to $1,000 for the donations received. Mark your connection card for the link to donate to regist or register to pack the meals. Registration is open for Vacation Bible School. It begins on June 27th. This year's program is called Monumental. It's for pre-K through fourth grade students. More information is available on our webpage. On that same link, there is also an opportunity to sign up to help or mark your connection card. We always need lots of hands for VBS. Ms. Rhonda is the contact if you have any questions. Our website, redeemerbythesea.org, is a great place to find more information and stay connected throughout the week. Again, welcome this morning to worship. Let's begin by standing and greeting those around you before our next song. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Oh God, you reign forever, our home, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You will not faint, you won't.
church. Good to be with you and to be here in the Spirit of God in this Easter season. Let's prepare our hearts for worship as we let go of that which burdens us through um, agreeing with God about our need for him. Yeah? We do that. We call it confession and forgiveness, and God invites us to do it as a breathing exercise, letting go of what's out and letting what's in and let it, letting it out so that we can breathe new. So we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, you know our need, you know our uh, desperate nature at times, and yet you've fulfilled it, and therefore you invite us, just as your dear children, to, to let go of that which burdens us and that which uh, maybe keeps life from being the brilliant thing that you've called us to experience. Our sins of omission, the sins of commission, the things we do and things we don't do, and all of that stuff that we want to do but can't seem to do it because of our nature and because of our hearts that need to be continually renewed. Therefore, Lord, we turn it over to you because we know Jesus and his cross and his empty tomb. We give it to you. Take it, please, Lord. Take it as we think about those things that we need to give you right now. Our Lord God wants you to know that he has prepared for you perfect forgiveness, peace, restoration of your soul, new life, new direction, new joy, ever flowing, whether you're five months or 95 years. It's there abundantly. In the stead and by the command of Jesus who chose me, weak vessel that I am, to announce to you the forgiveness of all your sins because of him, and because of your confession, your grabbing hold of his grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be healed, be blessed, and be empowered. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. As we listen to God's word, the first lesson especially, appropriate for today's theme and text of the sermon. Morning. The uh, first scripture reading is from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. 
The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it, and I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, the three men who had been sent to, to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers all as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be then even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. The second scripture reading is from Revelations chapter 21, verses one through seven. Then I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as heaven. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Because this is a gospel reading, we honor Jesus when we stand to hear his word. Thank you. Jesus is speaking, and this is what he says. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and that's why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Jesus went on to say, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of the disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you'll see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I'm going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, and so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while you'll see me no more, and then in a little while you will see me? Okay, very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that the child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. He is risen. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. It's Easter season, a week of weeks. Seven Sundays till we get to the big red Pentecost. 49 days of Easter celebration. But actually, not just one day, but every day is Easter, is it not? You bet. That's where everything comes alive and everything has new meaning and new direction. The implications of Jesus' resurrection are so profound. I mean, if he were not alive and did, did not rise and ascend and is alive today and coming again, oh, there would be no hope. There really would not be. It's just live your life out till tick, 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 boom. Hmm? Yeah, tick, tick, boom. Yeah. But that's not the way it is, is it? Not for the ones of us who know and have been tapped with the love of the Father to be changed and be in the process of changing. So my life and my death, my relationships, my purpose, my family, my congregation, all of these things get changed. Can you dig it? Can you handle it? Are you up with it? <laughs> As Redeemer by the Sea prepares for a new pastor, a new chapter of ministry, what changes? And what does not? Hmm? Yeah. It can be stressful to let go and to grab hold of the future. It can be. It can be a big time of remembering what it is we're here for. Getting the big picture. What it is that God has done in you and me, in the world, through Jesus Christ. The big picture of God's plan why this congregation was founded to begin with, why it still has a future that God is directing by its Holy Spirit, and how do we become a part of it more and more. That's what Easter does to us. It continually pushes us and haunts us to find where God is going and then join him where he is. Because he's out ahead of us. Did you know that? He's out there ahead of us. You see, Easter changes everything, everything. I think we can say that because of the overcoming of sin and death, the big obstacles, the power of evil will not endure. That last enemy death has been overcome. We know that through Jesus. And that change is so profound that all bets of stuckness are off. You can't claim, well, I have a, came from a dysfunctional family. Or my kids just don't see it the way I do. Or this congregation is not the same as the one I used to belong to. You see, everything is possible to come into health and wholeness because of the resurrection. It's a power to change toward freedom and responsibility and joy. My values change? You bet. It's gonna happen as God continues to hold out his invitation to newness. Now the most surprising change that happens, I think, at least it's been in my experience of some 76 years here, that the thing that changes or needs to change the most is me. I'm always thinking in terms of you or my kids, my family, my some, somebody else. Those people at that church, it's always somebody else. But the thing that I needs to change is me, my perspective, my outlook. Coming not just for optimism, but changed for resurrection purposes. My perspective needs to change. I think this is the way the world works. This is the way the church works. This is the way an ideal family works. I don't think we can handle anything that's out of the ordinary. Can you? (laughs) God handles out of the ordinary all the time. He does. He changes our perspective and changes the way we see things. And that's my biggest obstacle is getting it through this thick skull that there are possibilities beyond which I can't imagine 
Yeah. I don't, I'm probably showing more of my age than I should, but there's probably a few Trekkies out there, right? At least the more modern one. But go back to the original Star Trek, season three, episode eight. A perennial, a perennial theme in science fiction, which is um, being someplace and you think you're one place and you're actually another. In this case, I have touched the world and uh, it is hollow. I've, and he, he, the, the starship, a starship, an alien ship, is surrounded by an asteroid, camouflaged. And so the people think that they're on a star when they're actually in a spaceship. It's a common theme you may have found it in other Heinlein and other uh, science fiction writers, but, but the, these people didn't really know where they were, they, but they were happy in their ignorance, I suppose, you could say, except for the plot that thickens as it goes along. They thought the world was all on the inside, but somebody finds a ladder and goes to the top and sees that it's not, it's, this is an actually a starship. This is not a, a planet or an asteroid. And of course, he gets punished immediately for, for seeing things that he shouldn't be seeing. But God is bigger than our ability to see him. We put him in a box, not just a bread box. We put him in all kinds of boxes, and he's actually much bigger than that. J.B. Phillips uh, wrote a book back in the middle of the 20th century you now called Your God is Too Small. And he talks about the conceptions of God that we have, such as the heavenly marshmallow, or the parental, parental hangover, or the heavenly bosom, or the meek and mild all of that stuff that seemed to apply back then. But the point is that we cannot contain God in a box. He's bigger than all of our little preconceptions of him. And he's about to burst open our minds and change our hearts in ways that we would not anticipate. Which brings us to the text. The text today is about Peter's conversion. You know about Saul's conversion on the road to Damascus. Well, Peter had a conversion of a different type. He was already a fully kosher, a oh, little, little slippery, but I mean, he denied him three times, but, but still became confirmed in his faith that Jesus was the Messiah, the son of the living God, that he was there as God's own promised one. And he therefore was reaffirmed in his Jewishness. He was reaffirmed in, in God's excellent deliverance for the people of Israel. But in this dream, this vision of the sheet coming down with all these non-kosher animals in it, and in his experience of the vision that he hears God saying, kill and eat, to do exactly what he is forbidden by his religion to do, Peter has a mind-warping experience and ends up being able to say, oh, oh, I get it now. God shows no partiality. He doesn't care whether you're Jewish or non-Jewish, circumcised, uncircumcised, Jew or Greek. He doesn't, your ethnicity, your, your background, all of this is immaterial because God is up to something new. Everyone who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Whew, that was mind-blowing for Peter. Changed his whole attitude, changed his perspective, changed his mind. That hard-nosed Peter was whacked by the Holy Spirit. And his perspective changed. Now, the new Israel will now accomplish the original mission. And beginning from e the Garden of Eden, it was the original plan to bless everybody and to bring everybody back together. Same thing for Abraham, Moses, Elijah, and Isaiah. The plan was for all people, but we tend in the church to say, this is my Jesus and my way of doing things. And we get a little stuck sometimes when God has to go, oh, God is for all people. Mm, yeah, 
I've had that experience, and maybe you have too. You see, originally it was insiders and outsiders, Jews and Gentiles, back then. The Jews, God chooses some in order to bless all. And that's a good principle. He still does that too. He may have chosen you to bless somebody else or several others. God works through special means. He does that. And that works fine, but it's a means to an end, and the end is that all people would be saved. So the church that I grew up in, this was a Christian nation, we said. You know, we said uh, the church people were the insiders, and anybody that didn't have faith didn't go to church, and everybody that went to church had faith. Those Those were coextensive that way. Outsiders were non-church people, but we're no longer in a church culture. We're in a post-Christendom culture, and the church is no longer in charge, have you noticed? We're not in charge. We're like, like they, like for the first three centuries of the church, Christians experienced in the Roman Empire. Rome was in charge. They weren't. So what did they do differently in a world that wasn't churched when they were the outsiders? They learned how to be missionaries in new and exciting ways. You see, now in this post-church culture, the church are the outsiders and the non-churched are the insiders. It's a great reversal, but no different than it was for three centuries. And the church grew more in that time than it did after Constantine and the official adaptation of Christianity. That tells me that God is preparing us for the next reformation, the next direction. Maybe through you. Maybe through this congregation right here in River City. I mean, Redeemer by the Sea. Yeah? One of the things that I always think about as I write messages or sermons is at the get about at this point, about to, about to conclude, and I think to myself, is this gonna make any difference at all? So I ask myself, so what? <laughs> so what? Here's the message. Is it going to make any difference for you? Is it going to make any difference for me? So what? You see, God has surprises for us. And what we think is subject to change, we are now like missionaries in that foreign land where you, as an outsider, must find ways to gain an audience with the insiders. That's not a bad thing, it's just a different thing and a new thing, and it requires a new perspective, and it requires the Holy Spirit Not technique, not programs, not savoir-faire. It requires Holy Spirit that we're ready for the mission and and, and purpose of the church as it now really is. And the good news is that the same God who planned this all from the beginning to love you and me and all people is still working his plan out. And as the Holy Spirit comes, and we celebrate that again now on the first Sunday in June, things as we open up to it, things change. It still continues to change our life and our life together. So, I pray, Holy Spirit, keep me open. Keep me open to you. Keep Redeemer by the Sea open to you. If necessary, whack me with your Holy Spirit. Open my eyes. Shape me to see your power. Surprise me with your wind. Do that with me and with my sisters and brothers here at Redeemer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We now respond to God with our hearts, our offerings, our prayers. QR code donations are possible. All kinds of things are now available, I guess. But whatever it is that God has put on your heart, it's now time to send it back to him. Listen as we sing and offer. Let's have 
our prayers today, we'll remember several instances of, of need and of thanksgiving. We remember Sandra Berger and her family and their COVID situations there. We join with Rochelle to pray for Stephanie and Rochelle's brother-in-law, Sam, uh, seeking medical intervention. For four-year-old Corey, his donated kidneys are strengthening now, and he's getting some eyesight, but there's still long ways to go. So we pray for that four-year-old with new kidneys. We pray for Dr. Bell with stage four carcinoma, for Joe Brandt's sons, Gary and Mark, uh, Gary with uh, some serious stroke and blood pressure issues and so forth, and Mark with an unknown source of, of trouble. We pray for continued healing for John Saylor, Yvonne's son. And we pray with in grief and restoration for those who remember the Kenneth Cunningham family and uh, Gail Fritzer, whose son died recently. Are there other needs that we should share with our assembly today that need to be voiced? You can keep them in your heart and God knows, but if you want to express it, you can do that right now. A horrible accident on the way to church. Prayers for that family and that those victims of that accident. Yeah. Thank you. Young people who are struggling, who, who, yes, and we can count them many ways. Yes, thank you. Let's include that and any others. With these in mind, I invite you to stand and join me in prayer. Lord God, as dear children to their dear father, you know we love to come to you, and you love to hear us. And you are there to love us and to care for us in ways that go beyond our understanding. We lift up those that we have named and ask that you be their Lord and Savior in special ways of healing and blessing and change, mending, salvation, faith direction, and purpose. Lord, you give us all that we need for this body and life, and you give us eternal life as a free gift. Help us to use this journey in this time in ways that help ourselves and others to prepare for the life to come as well. For it's all of one piece with you, for you have loved us from the beginning and will forever. Now we ask you to also include everything else that we would say and pray and become and do using the words that Jesus taught his disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has another gift for us today. It's called himself in the Lord's Supper. Will you join me in this? We remember that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to the Father for it. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the meal, took another cup of wine. He gave thanks to his father. He gave it to his disciples and said, 
All of you drink of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the remission of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the Lord's peace that comes through this holy sacrament give you peace and joy in your coming week. Amen. Come forth to receive. built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, no other ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand.
This was a good taste of God's love today, and thank you for being a part of it. We invite you to come again next Sunday where we're doing some of the same thing and celebrating Easter more and more every day. Next Sunday also, the special installation of Pastor Hilkin will be in the afternoon at four, so two for one next Sunday, if you will, please. Yeah. And also, um, I send you with a prayer. May the God who has begun a good work in you through the Holy Spirit, sending you the message and hope of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, and the hope of everlasting life, dwell in your heart richly so that your life in its journey may experience all of the fullness of God in every turn and every new vista and new avenue that you journey down. And as you go with others in family and in this community, may you become what God has continued to call you to be, his own children forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor and countenance upon you. Yeah, and give you peace. Amen. Jesus Christ, 
who has resurrected me. Thanks for joining us today. Everyone have a wonderful week. We hope to see you next time. Jesus who loves me